I have a story for you guys. When I was in college, my first lesson with the great saxophonist, Bob Shepard, the moment I heard him play next to me, I could not believe the sound I was hearing. It was a resonant and beautiful sound. And it made me think a lot about the sound quality I was getting out of my horn. Like I was wondering, why can't, why don't I sound like that? How does he have so much color and nuance in his sound? And I started asking him a lot of questions about how to work on sound. And what he told me he practiced a lot was his overtones. What are overtones exactly? Overtones are the harmonics of the saxophone. And overtones train you to put your tongue in the right spot. They train your tongue position. And when you control your tongue position, you're able to have a very good airstream and you're able to control the upper and lower register of the saxophone without pinching. You start voicing instead of pinching the mouthpiece and biting for, to get the high notes out. And you learn how to relax your embouchure for the low notes instead of really just trying to drop your jaw, playing with really loud in the bottom register. So today I'm gonna to show you how I practice my overtones. The first thing you wanna do is to be able to play the different overtones off the low B flat, B, and C. Here's what it sounds like. After you've started getting the partials on the overtones, the next thing you want to try doing is matching overtones. And a lot of people do this differently, but what I found works for me is to just play the, either the fundamental fingering, which is the regular fingering followed by the harmonic fingering. And you just want to get the two sounds of your harmonics and your regular fundamentals as close to each other as possible. And it can be kind of like a zen-like uh, practice where you just do it about five minutes a day. You don't want to obsess too much about this. But in the future, you'll understand when you see your sound quality, you start developing more color and uh, roundness in your sound. And uh, you, you, you start creating flexibility. Once you've done your overtones and you want something else to practice and you've done overtone matching, another great way to practice the overtones to make sure you're voicing correctly is to play your major scales using the overtone fingerings. If you send me a direct message on Instagram, I'd be happy to share with you my overtone scale fingerings that I got from the famous saxophone teacher, Ramon Ricker. Here's what they sound like. <laughs> Thank you guys again for joining my third video on YouTube. I'm super excited to just keep making more videos for you guys and I hope this is giving you guys stuff to practice, especially during the pandemic. I hope all you aspiring saxophonists are staying inspired and practicing and hoping 
to be ready to play a lot of more music in the future as well. So if you like what you heard, please click the like and subscribe button below. Please follow me on Instagram at Timlin Bebop where I post a lot of daily content. And also, if you'd like a copy of my overtone scales or overtone uh, fingerings, I'd be happy to send them to you. Just send me a direct message on Instagram. See you on the next one.